What's up guys, it's Chris here, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through my entire 568,000 Rand investment portfolio in South Africa. We're going to open it up completely, no holds barred, and I'm gonna take you through every single investment in rands and cents, and not only the investment amounts, but how much each makes in passive income by percentage, so you can consider it for your own portfolio. I'm also going to show you exactly how much I bought and when I bought it to get to where it is today. And by the end of the video, I'll show you what I've been investing in lately to grow even further. This one is going to be mad. Let's get started. Okay, so as I always do, I wanna start these videos by showing you a screenshot of when I started investing 10 years ago buying two shares for about 1,000 Rand each to show you that everyone has to start somewhere and also that things don't happen overnight. So the best time to start was 10 years ago, but the second best time is today. So learn as much as you can. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please consider to do so. But let's jump right in to the investments. Okay, so I've got investments in three countries currently, in the United States, the United Kingdom, and South Africa. So we're going to start with the international and then go local. And I'll try to give some information about all of them in general so that you can learn a bit more about them and for if you're considering them for your own portfolio. If you don't know, I mostly use the Easy Equities platform to invest. And if you want to use them and don't already, the link in the description will give you 50 Rand to start your investing journey when you sign up. So let's start off first with the investments that we have in the United States. And just remember, if you want to look at anything in the screen in more detail, you can just pause the video. Let's begin with our ETFs. Here you can see that we have four different ETFs that we have invested in the USA and everything we have invested here has been in US dollars. The reason I did that is firstly to have some currency diversification in case anything bad happens to the RAND and secondly the dollar has a history of growing in value so it's also possibly a good investment. So the first ETF we have here is the Global X NASDAQ 100 Covered Call. That's a bit of a mouthful, but what this basically is, is an exchange traded fund that holds many different companies at once, so it's well diversified, but also the asset manager, in this case Global X, also trades call options, which gives some extra income from this ETF. And here, income is the name of the game, because not only does this ETF pay a whopping 12.7% dividends a year, it pays you dividends into your account every single month like a second income. This is a really handy ETF to build some passive income from the US. Then we have the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income, which is the same idea as the previous one. It has invested in multiple companies as an ETF and also trades call options for extra income. So very similar, but just allows me to diversify with two. So this one pays around 11.7% a year and also pays you every single month as a second income. Both of those are great and have shown a little bit of growth in the price as well. The next US ETF is the Schwab US Dividend Equity this one is a pure ETF, which is a collection of shares in multiple companies and doesn't have any call options. It basically means you get the share growth and dividends of all the companies it invests in. So for this one, it pays around 3.3% dividends every quarter, and it's had some nice growth as well. Now, the screens that I'm going to show you here are every date that I have bought into the stock, along with the price and the amount, and in the green is how much each investment has grown. So again, feel free to pause any way you want. The last ETF we have in the US is a recent one, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 Growth Index Fund. This is an ETF that holds much of your tech and high growth stocks like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, United Health Group, and others. After the beating growth stocks took last year, I think there's some real value, and in the long term, we'll have some way above average growth. So I made some investments here in January, and already they're up by about four to five percent, and I'm going to keep adding to this over the year, and the one percent dividends don't hurt either. Okay, our last investment in the US is not an ETF, but a shares in a company, and that company is called Simon Property Group. The name suggests it's a property holding company that has grown about 14% in share price and pays a very nice 5.58% dividend. I bought extra shares in this many times since October. So that's it for the USA, and it's time to move over to the UK portfolio, which is currently my highest performing offshore investments. First off, we've got SSE, which is a renewable energy power producer in the UK, similar to our ESCOM, but producing only renewable energy like wind, solar, and hydropower. With the war in Ukraine and Europe needing to produce their own energy, I think this has great long-term potential and is currently up a bit and paying a 5% dividend once a year. 
Then I invested in two British banks, once again hoping to benefit from the rising interest rates. The first is Lloyds Bank, one of the biggest banks in the country, and I seem to have invested at a good time because Lloyds has grown by 26% from September when I first bought, and even with that huge growth, it is still paying 4% dividends. The next British bank is HSBC, and I bought them also in the end of September, and they have seen even slightly higher growth with a crazy 27.5%, and it's paying 3.7% dividends. So overall, the UK has been Great to invest in this year. Okay, and that is it for the offshore. As you can see, these countries have been great performers this year with everything in profits, even during this down or recession market to 2022, so I'm really happy with that. But now let's move over and see if local is lacquer and take a look at our South African portfolio. Here we have 18 different shares, so we're going to go through them in groups. The first group is our index funds. As you can see, we invest in three index funds from around the world, which is the JSE Top 40 for South Africa, the S&P 500 for America, and the FTSE 100 for Britain. These three are both investments and experiments because we invest 100 Rand into each index every single month without fail to see what returns we can get from consistent dollar cost averaging, which basically means investing amounts regularly and consistently to average out your buying price in both good and bad markets. And as you can see, the strategy is working extremely well with all three indexes in profits, even though their markets were mostly down all of last year. So we're definitely going to continue investing that way for these three. Then we have our property section. We have shares in four different property investment instruments, which are Fairbest B shares, Reitway Global Property Fund, Satrix Property Fund, and Store Age. As you can see here, most of the share price growth is quite flat, meaning either slightly in profit or slightly in loss. I do think we'll see more growth in the future, but it's not a terrible thing because of course much of their purpose is the passive income, which ranges from about 5% minimum to a huge 14% for Fairbest. Then we have our two growth stocks. I call them growth stocks because they pay zero dividends and of course their value should come from their share price growth only. So we have African Rainbow Capital, which is Patrice Motsepe's company, and it includes in it Time Bank and Rain, along with quite a few others, which is up 21% currently. And Purple Group, which is the company that owns Easy Equities, which is up about 9%. Can you believe at one point Purple Group was up 150% for me? But in down markets, companies like Purple Group will lose some value, but I think it has huge potential long term. Then we go to our financial companies. I love financial companies because I think they have a great business model, but also with rising interest rates, most banks and finance companies will do well. So let's start with the elephants in the room. Clientele was a weird one. As soon as I bought it, it dropped like 15% and it hasn't really recovered. It has paid me some great dividends at 11%, but this one was perhaps just some weird timing, but I specifically only invested a small amount in this company. Then Capitec had some results that analysts thought were less than expected, and they've been having a rough run, but I've been buying some extra shares in it in these lower prices as well. But speaking of banks, you can see that we have been buying four banks this year, Capitec, First Rand, Nedbank, and Standard Bank. And this is why it's important to diversify, because even with Capitec Bank being down, the others together bring our banking shares into a profit, and all of them are paying some pretty decent dividends, around 5 to 7%. Some of them had to make some payouts due to the rise last year, but we took that opportunity to buy some additional shares, and thank goodness we did because those have been growing as much as 12%, and some of them is up around 17% in just the last 30 days. Okay, so now we're moving on to our last grouping for the South African portfolio, which is our unit trust. The two that we have are the Coronation Strategic Income, which is in our tax-free savings account, and the Prescient Income Provider. Now, these are designed specifically to not fluctuate too much in price, so they are low risk and both pay consistent and rising dividends, with Coronation at 7.5% a year that pays every three months, and the Prescient Income Provider that pays 6.7% dividends a year. But, get this, it pays you every single month just like a second income. That's a very popular one there. You can see we have a good amount invested in these at 45,000 Rand, and both have made some smaller gains as well. And that is it for our Easy Equities portfolio. Here you have the full breakdown of every investment we have, as well as every country we are invested, and the dividends for each investment. And once again, feel free to pause the video if you want to look in detail. But that brings us to a total amount of everything together of 210,834 Rand and 87 cents. But as you know, that's not all. Right now, we're going to move from Easy Equities and show you the rest of our portfolio and what brings us to the full total of 560,000 Rand. Okay, so the first thing we have here is loans that we have given out that are being paid back and are earning us interest. Now, I don't necessarily recommend this for everyone, but we have two loans with reliable debtors and we are charging an interest of 7%. 
These are two amounts of 34,000 and 50,000 respectively, and it brings us about 500 Rand a month. I'm not looking to issue any more, and I'm actually bringing them down from originally 107,000 to now 84,000, and eventually zero, and we invest that money as it comes in. Then we move over to our cash portion of the portfolio. Now, personally, I think it's always a good idea to keep a portion of your portfolio in cash for three reasons. The first is that you have a backup. Life can be unpredictable and should something ever happen when you need cash, you will have it available and you don't have to sell your shares or investments to gain access to it. The second reason is that you also never know when a good investment might come around and again you don't want to sell your long term holdings to be able to invest. So having a reserve of cash means you always have the option to take advantage when opportunities present themselves. And lastly, right now with interest rates being so high, it's actually a very good risk-free investment, which you're going to see in a moment. So there are two places I keep cash, and the first is in our Investec Prime Saver account. This is a savings account where the interest rate tracks the prime lending rate. So basically, if the interest rate goes up, so does your interest. So right now, we are making 7% interest on this cash account, which is a really nice percentage to have right now. The second place is our Time Bank Goal Save account. Many people don't know this, but you can earn 7% or up to 8% in these goal save accounts up to 100,000 Rand. So I have 95,000 Rand in this account and I'm earning 7% interest when I give 10 days notice. So that brings the total cash value in our portfolio to about 160,000 Rand and we're making nearly 1,000 Rand passive income from this cash every single month. And the very last investment we have here is 112,000 Rand that we have with Liberty and their Menta Nova Wealth Builder Fund. This is a fund that we don't manage and as you can imagine is managed by Liberty. While we actively manage a lot of our own investments, it's also good to have a portion that is externally managed just as a bit of further diversification in our portfolio. So here we have our non-stock market portion, which comes to a total of 357,000 Rand. And there you have it, a total and fully transparent breakdown of our entire investment portfolio in rands and cents from zero to 568,000 Rand. And here is the list of every single thing that we have mentioned in this video here today. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a like, and if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel. But until then, I'll see you guys next time, as always, on Casual Cash. Cheers.